Um, you're getting a look in, inside my little work uh, toolbox place, FM script workspace. Yeah, the example file isn't very good at the minute. Um, FM script workspace is just a little module um, for making it possible to edit scripts. Uh, getting a script to open in the script editor, it builds on top of the MBS plugin as very nearly all of my tools do. Um, and so uh, look here, here in here, we've got the module code FM script workspace, got a few scripts in there. And then we've got a few test scripts here. I've got a test script um, with the name test script and some stuff in it. And so I can, um, here, look. So here we've got a record in the file FM script workspace test script in line 14. Say you've got some um, analysis tool and it's spitting out, you've got an error in this line in your script. Then you can just click here. No, not FM 17 plus. Yeah, yeah FM 17 plus. Just click here. And there we go. Editor opens at line 14. Cool. So uh, how are you getting it to go to line 14? I'm getting it to go to line 14. Um, um, I don't know. Let's, let's debug that, see what happens. You I've got a couple of. You don't know who does. Yeah, I've got two or three methods of calling, calling, calling it. Uh, somebody else is coming in there. Okay. Um, so that particular button is. Um, directly calling one of the FM script workspace uh, API scripts, and the script is called open script. And uh, parameters are just um, uh, return separated, um, and I pass the name of the script and the line number. So this is the main, uh, basically the script that you call FM script workspace dot open script, and you give the script name and you pass the line number. And that script doesn't do much other than uh, comment, 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 comment. Reads the two um, parameters, opens the script workspace, and then I don't even think I don't think I need to do that. Uh, the I use the MBS plugin to bring the script workspace to the front. So if you've already got the script workspace open in the background, it's pulled to the front. We get no error, so we carry on. Uh, we then use the MBS script workspace open script function to um, open that script. And if it's uh, a problem, we try. Sometimes it doesn't work, um, uh, the MBS function to open the script because it uses the list on the left to find the script that you're looking for. And if the folders are all closed, then it doesn't, doesn't work. Uh, or if you've got a, a filter, search yeah. filter going on, then it doesn't find it. So it tries here to say, okay, then expand all the folders um, so that it, uh, I can see it. And then it tries again and coming up here. Um, if you've passed a line number, then it uh, calls another script, go to line. So if I put a little break point here and we run down to there because we've got a line here the go to line number takes a line number as a parameter um, and if a line number is specified it uses the script workspace select line which moves the selection to that point and then it does the script workspace scroll to selection to bring that to the middle of your view that's cool i didn't know did not know you could do that with mbs um, you can do that with MBS and, uh, as you see in my normal way, you know, I've made a little module, you know, I've given it a nice name. I've given it a nice icon, uh, FM script workspace. Uh, and I just haven't got around to pushing it to GitHub yet. Um, but it's really fucking cool. It's, it's, it's the potential is fantastic. Um, we have this, uh, this module, I've slapped it into every file of our solution um, because the, um, hold on, where's the, 
script, uh, FM script workspace, public API, the open script. Um, uh, this, where is it? Where's the MBS? This here. Um, this works only on the current file. So you need to make sure that uh, you've got this script in the file where you want to open um, a script. And so I've got this um, script in every file of our system. And then I've got a major script in our uh, root in a main file. And I pass to that the file name and the script name and the line number. And our main file knows yeah, it knows 90% of our files. And then we've got a, a little um, scheduler file. And behind the scheduler file, there's some other kind of like private files for particular customers, which aren't in our standard product. And so our main script looks at the file name and says, oh, I know that file and calls this script in the file that I want to target. And otherwise, if it's uh, an unknown file, it passes the uh, file name and script name to the um, script in our little uh, scheduler file and the scheduler file that tries to then do the same to say, oh, do I know any of these um, files? And if it knows it, it then calls the script. I think I think it uses call by call script by name um, to, to call this script in the file where it's to be run. And then this script opens the uh, script editor. And this functionality has been um, Fantastic. Uh, I'm, I'm not even going to try and open. Our, oh, no, hold on. I've, I've got a local copy. One second. One second. I might be able to show you. Um, uh, if I open in documents, um, go into business solutions. And look here. I've got something here. I'll open a local copy. That might work. I think it's the most modern version that I've got here. You were on Nils's session earlier, right? Where you showed his error handling stack. Um, I've I've sadly not seen anything today. I've been traveling between cities and. Uh... Well, he had a great implementation of uh, exception error handling. He's got some custom functions for throw and catch, and so he captures the entire call stack that okay. uh, got him to that point. And if he throws an error, he knows exactly where he is. He knows what scripts he he's in. He knows everything. And hmm. so if you combine what you have here with that, you know, if you're in test mode yep. as developer, you can immediately go, okay, I'm eight scripts deep on line yep. 247, jump straight to it. Here's where we threw the air. Here's the record in question. Here's the data point. Yep. Uh, it's fantastic. It's, this is, this has got to get out of my desktop and uh, up to GitHub. So everybody can start playing with it. It's, it's like you know, in my in my in my toolkit universe that I've got, it's uh, one of the things which is just fantastic. Everybody should have it. I just haven't got around to pushing it. Um, Caleb, the part uh, I asked Russell what he had in the lab that uh, he was still working with, and this is what he was responding to. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. I, I, always, I need I need to give you guys. I need to give you guys a whip to just whip me and uh, get me to to. I don't know what the, why is why is the password here not working? What's the password on this version? It's not that. So is it? I, I jumped over. Yeah, I jumped over to see what was going on over here. Uh, Jeremy's doing some review of, uh, yeah. of things in the uh, JavaScript side, but. Uh, I'll, I'll yeah. get in here in a second, guys. One, one, just be patient, please. Uh, see that? Yeah. I'm in. Got it. Yeah, okay. Found it at the end. Slightly yeah. older than I'd uh, hoped, but it doesn't matter. Um, so what, what, well, Russell, what I... Russell, do you speak as quickly in German as you do in English? I probably speak as much crap as I do in English. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm a, I'm a bit quick. You know, it's like I've got a lot to do in the day. I don't have time to speak slowly. <laughs> Is that, did that just, that just died on me? It did. Boom, gone. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just, uh, I'll just explain what I've got there. Um, yeah, basically all of the uh, analysis tools. Oh, there's, there's Oscar. Hi, Oscar. Hey. 
<laughs> in five minutes. In five minutes, my little man. Bye. <laughs> so the day will be moving on in a minute. Um, uh, I've got an extra extra table in our main file um, that basically has got you know file name, script name, uh, line number, and um, yeah, we basically export uh, information from crosscheck or whatever analysis tool is uh, used and suck it into this table. Um, so that we then just have a list of all the the um, scripts that we need to edit. So for example, um, we had a problem, it's somehow tied to Europe with FileMaker 19, or was it with Big Sur? I can't remember now. There was some situation where um, print um, steps weren't stopping to show the print dialog. There was some communication going on between FileMaker and the print dialog um, which meant instead of the print dialog appearing straight away, there was some little error going on in the print dialog as it appears, I think maybe for kind of like localization problems, or I don't know what, um, which FileMaker was interpreting as the print dialog's finished, so I can carry on the script. And so the script carried on until the very end of the process, and then the dialog appeared. So it completely screwed up printing um, uh, and it seemed to be only with certain printers or, or the likes and it seemed to be only a problem which uh, one or two um, European developers have had I haven't heard of it in America uh, at all uh, and we couldn't get um, Claris to be able to reproduce the problem in any way whatsoever and so I think the problem still exists so every time a customer updates to I can't remember, FileMaker 19 or Big Sur or whatever it was. It was a Mac problem. Um, all of the printing uh, goes up the spout. And so um, the simple solution was after every... Um, I know, that was it. That was it. We eventually worked out with help from community. It was um, if you have a print preview and then you continue from the print preview by pressing enter. Only under that condition, the um, print di dialogue didn't appear until the end of the script. And then you're in a completely wrong context and you print the wrong wrong information. You'd um, be pausing the script on preview and then hitting enter to and it was the script. And then one, it yeah, exactly. The print dialogue. Hmm. Exactly. It was just That's after weird. the, after the um, uh, enter preview mode pause, um, we had to do another little pause just a little zero, zero second pause after that, and the problem was gone. And we needed to do that everywhere where we had a print uh, enter preview mode pause. So we looked for- I noticed for... in someone, someone's demo that um, in script, uh, what do they call it, script workspace, what do they call it yeah. now? Anyway, it was, showing a, it was showing line numbers, um, or no, no, it was showing totals of line, I think it was showing totals of line numbers or something like that next to the script name. I assume that was MBS uh, doing that. That, that, does, that could be does, possible. And then there was the um, feature request that everybody was linking to earlier for providing a function for get script line number, something like mm -hmm. that. Does MBS give you access to that in execution? The script line number? That's a good question. Yeah, I think so. Oh, you were you missed that? Yeah, some today. I think it was during Neil's. Chris, I think you were posting about that. It was in Neil's presentation, wasn't it? Yeah, if you go to the Red Pill chat and sort of roll back a couple hours, I guess it's in there. Um, <laughs> there for that. A couple of thousand messages. Yeah. Yes. If I go Red Pill, it was. Yeah. Then, if you just search for the word "upvoted," there were several people upvoted. It. Yeah. Yeah. Just the so idea I, I, being, you know, is in the context of error handling, right? And so, you know, you can get last error, but what if there are multiple places in the script where, where something similar is happening, you wouldn't know which part of the script unless you coded it in, right? And so the idea was, well, if they just gave us a get script line number, then we'd be able to call that at the same time as get last error. And then we would know exactly what happened and where in the script. 
Yeah, I just pasted it in the bottom of the red pill, so that was the link. Okay. Have I shown you this thing? I FM Launchpad. Showed this to me last. FM yeah, I I'd love a refresher. I'm sure you've uh, made mods to it. Um, FM Launchpad is like a little tool for dealing with a with this thing here. Where is it? Dealing with this guy here. At startup open file. We have the problem. Oh, here, a little, they lost us here again. Give me, what's time? 58, give me two minutes. Okay, so two minutes, guys. He, he counts um, correctly. It's been five minutes since he came in last. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. he's watching his clock. He's, he's good, he's good. Um, the problem with the uh, at startup open file uh, field is that it's, it's um, for every version of FileMaker that you've got. And uh, as you can see here, I've got various um, versions of FileMaker. And it's also for FileMaker 18. We have two databases that we generally use. And so we have our, our um, live database with our company's data. We open from FileMaker 18 and our development database, we open from FileMaker 19. But I've also got other databases that I want to open. The, uh, my FM Workmate tool I open in FileMaker and my own database I open in FileMaker. And I've got another database that I open in FileMaker. And if you put, you know, it's like if you put a file in here, they all open this file. It's like I've just got copies and copies and copies of um, uh, FileMaker on my system. And the way that uh, I've then uh, done it here, look like FileMaker 19. I've got one version of FileMaker 19 here. Uh, and then I've got uh, here, look, I've got a um, version of FileMaker Pro here. I just duplicate the file and I've got maybe in here somewhere in FM Workmate. Um, I've also got a... Let's have a look. Uh, somewhere here. Let me have a look. Um, okay. Uh, is there an app in here? So whatever. I copy uh, the FileMaker app and duplicate it and put it in different places. I then set my startup to open up my FM Launchpad file. And if I'm in my FM Launchpad file, which is like a very large rocket or vibrator or you know whatever it is, don't know. Um, uh, I define um, what I want this little section to do. So first of all, there's a countdown of three seconds, and then um, there's the possibility to abort uh, the launch. And then um, if, um, oh, that's if the caps lock. Look here, it, on the left, if caps lock is set, then abort. Um, if um, the folder name uh, where the application is, is FM Workmate, or if the application name is FM Workmate, then start FM Workmate. Uh, if the application name is Advanta Master, then uh, I need to open our fire file. I need to launch URL opening that um, file from that uh, location. Otherwise, if the application name is my private database, then open that and blah, 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 blah. And these things, okay, these little things, um, uh, very interesting. Uh, here I've set an option um, to make a little capsule because you have the problem. We've got two databases to start. Advanta, our master version, our, our development version of the database, and a copy of Advanta, which we use in-house for our company, for, our, you know, for ourselves, for our business. And the problem is I can't start both of them at once because they've both got like a two minute um, startup time and the start file doesn't close until the script's finished. And so this rocket uh, FM launchpad file gets stuck for two minutes until the target database is opened. And so with the, this little option here, um, capsule mission, um, when, when capsule mission is set, then when uh, this section of the rocket uh, is active, um, it saves a copy of the file into the temp, into the temp folder, and then a little, a little uh, capsule um, file, so like drifts off to the right, uh, and then the main rocket can go back to Earth and be used by the next database, so I can then start my second database while my first database is still opening. Uh, and the little capsule file is opening uh, the the first database, and then I start the second database, and that's also then a little capsule uh, to start the second database. So over this thing, um, I've got a central control of um, 
which file should open in which context. And I can then, and so for example here, let me have a look, uh, if I put that away and what have I got down here? If I say, so here's my um, own private database. Uh, if I click on that, then we'll see um, that one, two, three, my private database. Okay, countdown, three seconds. Okay, so there's my private database starting. Hold on, uh, if I cancel that and we'll open the launch pad again and pause it for a second, we'll abort, go into vibrator mode or whatever you want to call it. Uh, uh, and then where is the Mr. WDB? Look here, in here, we'll say that's now a capsule mission and we'll see how it deals with capsules. Um, Sorry now, I can I can fire the rocket off here. So I start the rocket, counts down for three. It finds Mr. And okay, let me get a capsule. Okay. So there, there the capsule has started. Uh, the main rocket has uh, finished. So I can open another file maker here and I can start the FM launch pad from here. Yeah. Um, okay, that had nothing to do, nothing's defined for this context. So uh, it didn't start, but I can I can abort it here and yeah okay that's that's you know that's my little starter file, and I don't know how many hours I invested in this thing, but I really should also publish it you know you know Chris thank you for asking. <laughs> it's very fun I like it. Yep I'll uh, I, I don't think I'll publish it hold on hold on have a look, it's always a question my my memory these days is really bad so let's have a look going to GitHub. GitHub Mr Watson um, oi. Repositories here, FM Automate, Syntax Colorizer, but I think an FM Launchpad. Have I really not? No, look, I haven't put FM Launchpad out, so I need to get that up there so you can all enjoy a little bit of um, uh, context sensitive file opening. Little, uh, the only downside, the only down, the only downside is um, FileMaker, uh, Claris uh, have implemented the um, the start file option to always fire, even in the situation that you go and look for some file maker file. Uh, what have we got here? Repeat text. I know. If you open that, and you know that's the file you want to open, sadly, that is ignored, and the um, file which has been chosen starts and so fm launchpad opens so that's something i can't get around i'm afraid Russell, I wanna, can i can i get a word yep. in you can <laughs> you can <laughs>